All right, so this is Diesel We The People News. Okay, not an attorney, not giving legal advice, just opinions, opinions only. Why? Because I'm not an attorney, nor care to be one. All right, just looking out. Uh, never looking straight forward. Always look around me, be able to protect myself by any means necessary, people. All righty. So this is going to be part two of basically the understanding of how to break down. So we got to do, and it's not a bad word, people, retardo. All right, slowly read, okay? Uh, it's not a bad word. People are misconstruing such thing, right? But when you use it in a correct definition, right? That's not a bad thing, okay? So, just remember, do it slowly. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive and real change. Maybe this will go a little smoother. And they got big problems with this. Now, let's look here at number three. You tell me how sexy are those elbows? Yeah, you can't make this up. Oh, did you see my elbows? with this. Now, let's look here at number three. Based on the business records maintained on account, you know, blah, 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 and its corresponding receivables here and after the account, which are a compilation of the information provided upon acquisition and information obtained since acquisition. Now, if you can explain that sentence to me, that's fabulous. Okay. The account was originated on this date by Credit One Bank represents a valid obligation of X number of dollars. Okay. So, what is... I'm going to pause right there, right? Because that is very important, y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you do this on your own, right, sometimes you actually got to stop, look up the definition of words, right? Uh, because they do, in fact, use trickery of words, making things unlawful, making it look like it's lawful. All right, you're under the illusion, under their spell. However, you want to look at the words on that. All this sort of nonsense talk. My hardest thing when I was a young tiger, get my license for the very first time, right? When I read the questions, all of them sound like they was correct, right? You had to really sit there and define and clearly read the words, right? Because it, when it says there's four questions there, all four of them, when you read it quickly, sounds correct. That's the reason why people actually miss some questions, right? Because all four answers sound the sound like it's correct. Talking about well, in a big picture. This is really talking about, again, there's two concepts in our previous video about you owing the debt and the debt buyer owning the debt. So see, they say in paragraph number two, hey, we bought this debt. Okay, that's what we did. And then we'll see in paragraph four and five, they say we, we bought this debt. Okay. And then they're going to say, well, here's when you took it out. And this is how much you owe, so you really owe it. But, you know, there's this sentence is unnecessarily complicated, which makes me suspicious when I see stuff like this. So we've got this account and receivables. So those are two separate things. We have an account and a receivable. And then they talk about a compilation of information provided upon acquisition. Well, we'll see in a minute who they bought it from. Here's a hint. It was a credit one bank. And information obtained since acquisition. So that would mean that LVMV bought this debt, if you believe them, from somebody. And then they've done some research and they've gathered some information. And all that tells them that the account was originated on April 26, 2015. Yeah, that, there's nothing that they got after acquisition that tells them that. Okay. And it represents a valid obligation of, again, it's sort of gobbledygook here. But here, here's a significant thing. 
those purchase agreements sometimes will really distinguish between the receivable and the account. The receivable and the account. The receivable is the actual money. Okay, so like we have accounts receivable, you know, that's money that's owed. And then you have the actual account here. And not all purchase agreements, but a lot of these purchase agreements will separate these things out. Sometimes they'll say, we're selling the account to company X and the receivables to company Y. Well, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Like, well, if you don't get the receivables, what are you buying? It's a great question. You know, and, and again, we have to look at these purchase agreements to figure this out. But it certainly raises some questions here about what's going on. Now, let's look at number four. This is very interesting. Plaintiff is the current owner of the account. Well, current owner would mean they're... Okay, I'm going to pause right here for a second, right? Now, remember, or, okay, I'm not attorney. I'm not giving legal advice, okay? Uh, so do not take it as such. Do your own research. Now, kind of like in a foreclosure, all right? It seems like every two to four years, somebody pays off the banknote and somebody else owns it, right? However, your contract was with that one uh, particular deal. Let's go with bank one since he brought it up. I took out a mortgage with bank loan. The original contract I signed with. Then, four years later, two years later, to level out the books, they had to get rid of it. So they passed it to another, right? The one you did not have a contract with. The issue we have on standing is that my house is actually paid off, my contract has been fulfilled. It doesn't change the fact somebody else paid it off for me. If my brother uh, came in and bought my house, my obligation to that contract is fulfilled. And uh, I am the rightful owner. Didn't think about that. Now it gets a little tricky. You had to fight these all up in courts and this, that, here and there. But the understanding of the facts is still uh, the simple fact that the first contract, the original contract you agree to, the debt is paid. Okay? That's exactly what it is. The debt has been paid under your contract. There's all this other googly things, you know, you may have to dig through. Okay? Again, I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving legal advice. Do your own research, okay? But my seeing, what I see, is that my contract has been fulfilled and I, my house is still my house now. <laughs> Figure it out, y'all. Not the original owner, right? But they say, hey, now we own the account. So remember... They show that you owe the original creditor. That's only half the battle for them. All they've done is show that you owe the debt. Now, they have to prove they own the debt. And that's what LVM is trying to do here. Hey, we own it. And our business records indicate that subsequent, in other words, after the account's origination, other owners of the accounting... And just like that, <clears throat> how else we go back to the house, right? I did not contract, let's just say, these people, my contract is not with you, right? Again, you got to go through all these googly goo things uh, through the court systems. But the original contract has been fulfilled. Whoa, look at all these companies here. So it went from, if you believe LVNV, it went from Credit One Bank to MHC Receivables LLC. There would be a purchase agreement between Credit One and MHC Receivables LLC. Where's that purchase agreement? Are you good? No. I think I'm laying up my car insurance. Good thing the general gives you a break when you need it. With flexible payment options to keep you covered. Just tag us in. Like right now? Oh, 
was talking about insurance. Great low rate. <laughs> Go with the general. Stacy's pita thins. Crispy? Yeah. Flaky. I was stepped out of the room for a minute. HC Receivables LLC sold it to FNBM LLC. Well, there would be a purchase agreement. They didn't do it on a handshake. They didn't write it on the back of a napkin. Hey, we're selling you $50 million worth of debt for $5 million or $2.5 million. No, there's a contract. It's a long contract. Purchase agreement is going to be you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 pages long. Okay. But then it doesn't stop there. Then FNBM LLC sold it to Sherman Originator Roman Numeral 3 LLC. Well, who's that? Well, that's in this sort of family of LVNV companies. Now, again, when we sue them, they're very quick to point out, oh, these are totally separate entities. And you have to respect the corporate formalities between all these. You know, we have assets sort of tucked away in all these different companies, and, and you can't combine it. So they're very quick to say, hey, these are absolutely separate companies. Now, when they sue, they want to kind of lump them all together. Okay, So again, it goes from Credit One to MHC, from NMH, MHC to FNBM, from FNBM to Sherman Originator, Roman numeral three, LLC. Again, there would be a purchase agreement. But that's not all. <laughs> then Sherman Originator, Roman numeral three, then sells it to Sherman Originator. LLC, totally separate company. And then that's when LVNV says, and that was the last company before us to get it, which means Sherman originated LLC, then sold it, which would mean there's a purchase agreement to LVNV funding LLC. Now, what they're not saying in this affidavit, but based on my experience, the truth is there's another company in there. It was sold from Sherman originator LLC to resurgent. And then Resurgent sells it to LVNV. They kind of left that step out, okay? But let's just take what they say here. Let's think about how many purchase agreements. So a purchase agreement from Credit One Bank to MHC, that's one. And then to FNBM, that's two. And then the Sherman Originator, three. So that's three purchase agreements. And then Sherman Originator, Roman numeral three, to Sherman Originator, that's four. And then Sherman Originator, LLC, to LVNV, that's five. And really, I think there's a six in there. But we got five purchase agreements. Okay? Now, it, just think about it this way. Sort of visualize a timeline in your mind. On the left is the original creditor. On the far right is LVNV. Okay? And so you draw a line from LVNV, I mean, from uh, Credit One Bank, the original creditor, to MHC. Now, if... Credit One Bank only sold them the right to collect the money, but not to sue. Well, then MHC can't sell anything more than they had. Okay, It would be like me selling you, let's say I had a, a, a lot on a lake, and I said, I'm going to sell you one-tenth ownership of that lot. And you go, great. And then you turn around and sell it to your brother-in-law, and you say, I'm selling you the whole thing. Well, no, you don't have the whole thing. You only got one-tenth. The most you can sell is what you bought. Well, the most MHC receivables can sell is whatever it bought. The most that it can represent the accuracy of is whatever Credit One Bank represented the accuracy of. Okay, And most of the purchase agreements from a company like Credit One Bank, not exactly a, a sterling example of a fine institution in my opinion, they are not going to represent that, oh, everything we're giving you is the gospel truth here. No, they're going to say, hey, you're buying it as is, no representation. In short, and again, I'm not an attorney and I gave them legal advice, okay? Do your own research. <clears throat> if I bought a house, $200,000. I paid it down 25000 so I owe 175000 okay? But these, uh, one of these creditors, Bought my house for $150,000, right? Well, they could only ask for that $150,000, right? And then draw the interest off that $150,000. Okay, well, that left $25,000 unpayable. But that's not my fault. <laughs> right? Ugh. 
good luck with it. Well, that means MHC can't sell anything with sort of a greater representation than that. And so that goes to FMBM, which goes into Sherman Originator 3, which goes to Sherman Originator, which goes to LVMB. You see the difficulty these guys have? The more transfers there are, it's just it, it, there's more opportunity for them to make a mistake for there to be errors. And, and, and look, LVMB chose to buy this debt. They knew it had been bought and sold all these times. And so it knows there's greater risk. As you can imagine, when you're buying at like number five or six in line, you're hardly paying anything for it because it's complete garbage. Okay. And so then they say in paragraph five, on this date, all ownership rights in the account were assigned to, transferred to, became vested in plaintiff, including the right to collect the current balance owing a blank plus any legally permissible interest. Well, again, that's going to be from Sherman originator to almost certainly resurgent, who then transfers it to LVNV. But again, they have to prove all those steps. We don't assume in court. We don't go, well, you know, LVMB, fine, upstanding company. I bet that they really bought. No, we don't do that. We say you have to prove that you own the debt, which means you have to prove exactly what you bought from Sherman Originator. And then Sherman Originator has to prove exactly what it bought from Sherman Originator, Roman numeral three. It has to prove exactly what it bought from FNBM LLC, which has to prove exactly what it bought from MHC Receivables <laughs> LLC, which has to prove exactly what it bought from Credit One Bank. That's a whole lot of proving, okay? And that's their problem because they chose to buy this debt that had been passed around half a dozen times, and now they're suing on it, and they just want to gloss over and say, hey, we own it. Remember this? If we go back to the top, the current owner, how do they know they're the current owner? They go, oh, well, we bought it from Sherman Originator LLC. Well, who'd they buy it from? Well, we don't know. We just, it says, you know, all these other companies. So, anyway, that's the deal here with paragraph five. And then six, defendant's not a minor or mentally incompetent person. And then number seven, they just say, hey, we think this amount is owed and there's no offsets or payments or credits. And then here we have, I affirm under penalty of perjury that the above facts are true and correct to the best of my knowledge based on the plaintiff's business records. To the best of her knowledge. So that's very interesting. That may come back and be um, a problem for her and for LVMB. But this is... And we go back again, right? This is the reason why judges don't really uh, sign an affidavit under penalty of perjury, right? Or the prosecutors. They don't want to be a witness, but they want to be a witness. They want to be a claimant, but they don't want to be a claimant. <laughs> Certainly one way to look at these affidavits, and, you know, there are other things that we can bring up. I'm not going to go through everything on a public video, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of just kind of taking it piece by piece, very slowly, very methodically, and saying, okay, is this sentence true? And what does it mean? Like, here the, you know, the expression, the elephant in the room, you know, it's kind of like, you know, well, the elephant in the room, nobody's talking about. Well, if you visualize that, imagine you're in a living room with somebody, and there's this giant elephant, and everybody's like, I don't see the elephant. Well, eventually the elephant starts going to the bathroom. Like, you can pretend it's not there, but I promise you'll know it's there, okay? So the elephant in the room, there's several, but the big one is, look at all these transfers, all these different companies. Where are all the purchase agreements? Where's all the proof? All the details of those transactions. All right, we're going to go ahead and end it here. That's 20 minutes, okay? Again, <clears throat> I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving legal advice. This is educational. We're learning something. We're thinking outside the box. All right. Uh, we're not trying to go by here, say, even though you are by me. <laughs> Do your own research, people. All right. Look, I'm not the brightest tree on the block, but if I'm learning this, so can you. 
And I guarantee you, 95% of y'all out there is smarter than I am. I'm just saying. You are, in fact, smarter than me. I know what my limitations is. Okay? I got to research, 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 research. My mind does not restore. So I have to go back over and over and over again to keep it uh, refreshed. All right? So this is Diesel with the People News, y'all. Good luck. Till next time. Bye.